G'day, it's Heath here from PickingLessons.com. Could you pick out all those chords I was just playing? If you're looking at that and weren't sure, this lesson's gonna be for you. We're gonna cover the major and minor movable chord shapes around the banjo neck. Now this is really important. Firstly, this lesson is laying the groundwork for a future series at PickingLessons.com where we're gonna look at back up on the banjo for non-bluegrass styles. So styles of music like uh, Celtic, uh, folk pop, jazz, blues, other styles of music. And for us to do that though, we really do need to know these chord positions, understand where they are, how we apply them to different positions, different keys. So that's really important. So we're gonna do that as part of this lesson. But firstly, here in this video, we're gonna learn these three major positions. Focusing on the key of G for this lesson, but three positions. Now, bearing in mind these are movable, so you'll be able to play any major chord, really. But over at pickandlessons.com, you'll be able to grab the remainder of this lesson where we'll have a look at the three minor positions. We're gonna have a look at what I like to call the landmarks, uh, where we'll look at the important chords for this particular key, G, C, and D, and the three minors, E minor, A minor, B minor. So look at where do we play those, not just one position, but three positions for each. So there's a bit of study involved there, but it's really important to start to learn those on the banjo and any instrument really. Uh, then we've got some vamping examples to follow up with so we can start working on playing some rhythm with these chords and of course this chord study you heard at the beginning there uh, where we'll have a look at a variety of chords in the key of G all over the neck. The G, the C, the D, the B minor, the A minor and the E minor are all in there. So that's over at pickinglessons.com. But here in this video we are going to start out with the three major chords. So these three major chords all G's. And basically what we're doing there though is just uh, rotating or rearranging those notes. And we have three ways we can do that. So the first position here that we're gonna learn, we would call this root position because the lowest note in the chord is a G. Where we move to the next position, this is what we would call first inversion because what happens is the series of notes that we have, G, B, and D that make up the chord, we're now playing the B on the bottom of the chord. So the lowest note in the chord is a B and that's what we call first inversion. So we had those two and now our third position here is what we call second inversion and second inversion places the third note of the chord, so the D, G, B, D, on the bottom of the chord. So we have three ways of playing the G major chord shape, that's it. Now we can break that down into a few other ways of looking at it, but really that is it, they're the three positions. Let's go about learning these together. We'll spend a little bit of time on each and there's two ways we're gonna look at it. Firstly, we're gonna look at a four note chord, but then we're gonna split that off into two three note chords. Okay, we're gonna do that for each position shape. So firstly, this position here, uh, the root note G is at fret five, that's the important one to remember. When we start to think about landmarks and think about where these chords are, we need to be able to focus in on where the root note is in the chord. So our root note G, fret five string four, is followed by the second and the first fingers in this triad, with the little finger playing that last note there on fret five string one. So there's our four note chord. So take some time to have a practice of that one, but now let's split it into two. And what I mean by that is we're gonna look at that chord with just the triad, so third, second, and first. And then we're gonna split it into the other triad we can have there, which is second, first, and the little finger there on top. Now that's important because we don't always need that full entire chord. So if you can get used to playing just a triad, it will give you a different sound. Sometimes you may wanna play back up or accompany somebody with a higher sound. Sometimes you might want the that lower sound, it can make a big difference into what you um, are playing as well. So it's really important. So we have the two triads, three, two, and one, then two, one, and four, but of course the four note chord, if you wanna play that as well. So that's all really handy. You really need the three options there. Two triads and the four note chord. So spend some time learning those to begin with. Stop this video, practice that up, come back to it again. That's really important that you get that shape. But we're gonna move on to our second position of the chord. So our opening chord there was root position, G on the bottom. Our next position of the chord along the neck will take us into that first inversion shape. And that is telling us that the B of the chord, so G, B, D, B is the third note in the chord, uh, the major third, that's the lowest note we hear. So in this case here, there's the B. 
Let's learn the chord shape and then pull that apart a little bit further. So firstly, the chord shape. Third finger there is up at fret nine, string four. First finger there, string three. Second finger, little finger. There's our four note version of the chord. Triads, first part of that, three, one, and two. And then try it on top, one, two, and four. I mean, you can use your third finger, but it's nice to keep that little finger there in case you want to switch. So there's the next version of the chord. Now, first inversion, that's great. B's on the bottom, that's fine. But let's look at where the root note is. That's what we're going to do for each chord. So the root note for this particular chord, we find that on string two. So string two, fret eight, that's the G note. That's the root note inside the chord. So it's tucked away inside the chord there. First position we played, root position. Root note is on the bottom. That's sort of a really classic way of hearing that chord with a root note on the bottom there. It gives it a lot of strength, but inversions are important too. And you can see the G is tucked in the middle. And it gives it a different color. Still a G major chord. This is the important part. Start to remember where these positions are for each of the chords. So, root position. First inversion, our last one is super easy. This is the second inversion chord played at fret 12. You need to bar your finger, your choice of which finger you like. I'm using my first finger at the moment. Different situations may call for a different finger. But let's go with one finger for now. Keep using that same finger. Keep it flat across four strings, fret 12. And there's our four note version of the chord. So second inversion means the D in this chord, G, B, D is on the bottom, and then our root note there is actually on string three. So G at fret 12, string three, is our root note for that particular voicing of the chord. And if we were breaking that into two tries, it's super easy. Nothing really changes but then there's your four note chord. So that's a really easy chord to play, but nonetheless, it's still a G and it's important. And the fact that we have that on the 12th fret, uh, that's the same as the open strings, which of course in our open G tuning is a G major chord. We already know that. But you can see how that chord comes together up the neck, played in a basically the same form, but this time barring a finger. And the triads just to separate it just remember you don't have to play all four notes at once so just highlighting what we've covered there our G in root position break it into triads as well G in first inversion and our G in second inversion there you go three major chords now firstly they're G's G is an important chord position on the banjo Standard tuning, we're in the key of G. You're gonna play in the key of G a lot in this tuning. You need to know, again, what I'm calling those landmark positions. G, G, G. Bang, 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 know where they are. Learn where those fingers need to be placed. That's really important. You could try moving through the triads. Strings two, three, and four triads. Then the top three strings. You could do all four notes. Just get used to being able to move between those shapes. So that's just for G, that's for one chord. We want to be able to do that for multiple chords in multiple keys. So this is our starting point. Really important to get this point really clear so that as you move on and build on these, uh, these ideas, you're comfortable. Okay, so firstly, I encourage you strongly to memorize those chord shapes because we're only stacking more information on top beyond this lesson. Now, speaking of which, pickinglessons.com in the member section there, you will be able to access the remainder of this lesson on these major and minor chords. But next again, gonna cover the minor chords and we're gonna work on landmark positions for the entirety of the key of G. So the G, C, D major chords and E, A, B minor chords. Three options for each chord. So a bit of study to do there. Have a look at some vamping examples. So vamping is just playing. different rhythms within those chords. It's just like a rhythm technique. Uh, and then we'll break down that chord study that we open this lesson with too. So you can put into practice these chord shapes and study where they are and just start to really get to know the banjo neck. So pickinglessons.com, I'll see you there.